Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What is clearly a scam but is so normalized people don't notice. I just paid for the privilege of setting up my router. My cable company recently started trying to charge me for my router. Which I own. I got a notice saying we noticed an error in billing and we will be charging you for the equipment rental starting in December. The fuck you will, I have every receipt from every cable or phone transaction I've ever done for that exact reason. I paid outright for my router so I would be renting their shitty equipment at $12 forward slash month. Now they want to charge me for my own property. After receiving that notice I hopped right onto customer service to get it resolved, and they directed me to their loyalty department because they could best handle it over there. I cut off the conversation and just cancelled my service. Cable companies are pure scum. Must be nice to have other providers to choose from. The loyalty department sounds like the people who try to persuade you not to cancel. Seems a bit premature to transfer you to them before you say you want to cancel. Mobile game ads that show gameplay of a Call of Duty or Skyrim style game but in reality are just a spin-off of Candy Crush. Don't forget those game ads that pretend to be puzzle games where you pull pins. Looking at you, homescapes. Our forward slash fuck homescapes. Rent to own furniture and appliances. There was an episode of Hotel Impossible where the owner rented the couch in her lobby on a weekly basis for years. She could have bought multiple couches with the money she spent on that one couch she doesn't even get to keep. For a hotel lobby I could see that being worth it. Lot of traffic, you'd be trashing your furniture regularly. I don't give a shit if my 10 year old couch looks 10 years old. Hotel lobby wants all their shit looking pristine. Worked in solar construction for a while where you would travel to the middle of nowhere to work on a site, so they gave us a housing fund to rent a place during the job. People would get the rent to own furniture and charge it to the housing money as a living expense. Company was cool with it and once it was paid off the worker got to keep it. Yeah I lived in some company provided housing for a few months once and they furnished the place with rent to own stuff. So situations where rent to own actually makes sense to exist. They're just pretty niche and only represent a, a fraction of their business. Manufacturers refusing documentation to private repair enterprises and requiring you to get your products fixed by the dealer. Basically, the reason for the right to repair movement. Ah oh yes, I used to work with John Deere and they were terrible about it. Farmers are looking for older equipment because they don't have those software lockouts. Agreed, when the crop is coming in, it has to be harvested now, not three weeks from now. What John Deere wants, tractor brakes. Put it on a truck, ship it to the nearest repair facility, which may be hundreds of miles away, put it in the repair queue, wait until it's fixed, then truck it back to the farm, hundreds of miles away. In the meantime the crop has spoiled. What farmers want, tractor beaks. Pull out the diagnostic scanner, check the codes, repair it on the spot, go back to harvesting. Total time, less than a day. For a farming supply company, John Deere doesn't seem to care much about farmers. My dad's a mechanic and helped me diagnose and fix a car issue I had via video chat this weekend. I spent less than $15 on parts and tools and a few hours under the car, because I'm not too experienced yet and don't have jack stands, and saved myself a couple hundred at least. Edit getting some comments about always using jack stands. Thank you for the concern. I did not have the car jacked up because I did not have the stands and their importance was drilled into my mind at a young age along with never trust hydraulics. I was able to fit under the car and get where I needed to with the park brake on. It took me a few hours because I wasn't able to get a good working angle right away. Ticketmaster. Fuck Ticketmaster. Yes. Basically scammers adding huge marks up but making it impossible to use anyone else. Not to mention allowing mass purchasing bots to scoop up tickets only to offer a third party market platform for those same scalpers to resell the tickets at increased prices to the fans actually going to the show TM takes a cut twice. The Verizo $1 scam. Verizo tacked on a $1 fee on to 8% of their customers bills each month so over the course of the year, they did it to every customer, about 150 million. Their rationale was, 50% wouldn't notice and just pay the charge or would notice and wouldn't spend any time fighting a $1 charge. 50% would notice the charge and call to have it removed. Of those, 35% would get frustrated while on the call and give up. This added approximately $120 million to the bottom line each year, 
three total, until caught. Once caught, they paid a $25 million fine. That's actually a really smart idea. Illegal but really smart. They don't give a shit if the fine is insignificant. At a certain point, illegal just means you have to pay to do stuff. Those registries that people pay money to name a star. I keep seeing advertisements on FB for companies that will give you official lord or ladyship for like $50, based on giving you the title to a small parcel of land somewhere like Scotland. I googled one of them once, and the first result was a breakdown of why the company is fraudulent and doesn't actually have access to any land anywhere. I bought my friend one square foot of land in Scotland through a legit company, they are actually a forest preserve and do this to raise awareness and interest in forest preservation. It is super cute and they send update newsletters about your land they offer tours as well. Definitely lots of scam knockoffs though. I've seen the name a star thing that was legit through my city's space and science center. The money goes to funding kids programs. But never buy anything off Facebook, that's just asking to be ripped off. Email libertas. Glory to see lad. Edit, this is the sweetest display of nationalism and international support, thank you all. I think that would make a great base to a story about some Joe Schmo who buys a star and inherits the problems from that star's inhabitants. They come all the way to Earth after looking up the International Star Registry and he has to deal with their centuries-old wars. Edit, oh wow. I didn't think this would blow up so fast. Thanks for the awards and thanks for encouraging a story out of this. I may just do such a thing. I will also look at those references everyone has suggested. This idea had been in the back of my head for many years, I had no idea anyone else may have thought similar. Funerals and everything to do with them. The funeral industry has insane pricing. Some of the funeral homes and vendors are even predatory, getting grieving families to pay upwards of tens of thousands of dollars, because that's what the deceased would have wanted. You didn't love your father at all, did you, was the question that had me slam my fist down on the table. My dad wanted a cardboard box cremation and no memorial. He got a cardboard box cremation and no memorial, with zero upselling from a different cremation service. The state AG got a complaint about the first cremation service. That is some hot garbage. Make sure you go back and leave a Google review for them also if you haven't already done so. People sometimes forget that you can review anything, I am sure I have cost my old bed buggy slumlords many potential tenants. Someone working there said that to you. Fuckers. If I had it my way when I die, just throw my body in a hole, no casket. This is how it should be. Burn me and put my ashes in a Folgers can. Edit, I'm very confused by the replies mentioning incest, but not confused enough to Google Folgers ashes incest. The most common lie in the US is that there is a legal requirement for embalming. No state has such a requirement forward slash law. Embalming is expensive pollution to make your rotting corpse look nicer for a few more years. There is a YouTube channel called Ask a Mortician. She covers this topic well. Printer ink. Buy a laser printer. Expensive up front but pennies in the long run. Most come with scan forward slash fax features that comes in handy in the new work from home era. I did exactly this. Changed out from inkjet to a color laser. Pretty penny up front, long term cost has been maybe 1% the total cost of using an inkjet long term. I do not like saying never, but I will indicate that I am incredibly hesitant to any plans for a purchase of an inkjet for the foreseeable future. Often, the point isn't the not noticing, but the having a lack of better alternatives. I hate Amazon as a company but sometimes there is literally no alternative. Fuck. Spectrum cable and internet. Fuck I had to get that out. My friends and family are stuck with this company because there's no competition. What's worse is when the companies try to do right and we force them back into scamming. Stores like JCPenney sell $10 shirts for $20 at a percent 50 discount. They also inflate the price of belts, wallets, and underwear but then lower the price of pants. It all evens out but the customer gets the satisfaction of getting a deal. Once they tried to get rid of that with a fair and square pricing strategy but it almost bankrupted the company and it never fully recovered. People don't want to buy cheap stuff. They want to buy expensive stuff at a discount so they feel like they're getting a bargain. Planned obsolescence, where products are deliberately designed to have a defect or worse performance shortly after the warranty has expired. 
Edit, wow thanks for all the upvotees and the rewards. Here are two examples on how companies can influence how long a product can last. Using inferior materials in critical components, like using soft metal screws or cheap plastic instead of metal in stress-bearing parts. Companies know how long these components on average use last, so they can strategically place them. Designing the product so that components that often need replacing cannot be replaced by just anyone. An example is that a lot of products now have batteries that you cannot replace yourself anymore. Sometimes they are even so designed that even i pet repair shops will have a hard time replacing these components. It is not only phones, but can be any electronic product. No shit. My car has a 60,000 mile warranty. 60,007 my transmission shut the bed. Edit, Chrysler. The third dealership I went to finally took pity and covered it. Chrysler is the only car company I do not even consider when buying a car. No car's transmission should go out at 60 Kelvin, but that's typical stuff for them. Been making hot garbage for 40 years. The first light bulb ever made still works. Competing light bulb manufacturers once formed a cartel and agreed to purposely shorten the life of their light bulbs, thus forcing the general public to replace them more often than they would otherwise need to. This is one of the earliest examples of planned obsolescence. From Wikipedia, the bulb's long life has been attributed to its low power, nearly continuous operation which reduces thermal expansion, therefore reduces the wear of filament, and dedicated power supply.